everybody, Invisible Katana here with my super late review for Ruby Volume 9, Episodes 4 through 7. So, aside from being super behind because of laptop issues, then being sick, and then family emergencies, and all sorts of craziness, I'm finally here to talk about Ruby. And I was going to split some of these up, I was going to do 4, 5, and 6 together, because at first it seemed like they were going to be sort of an ascension arc where it seemed like, you know, the first three episodes with the introduction, four, five and six were like, here's you know what Ascension is without the name. Here's what Ascension is with the name. And then here's like the darker side of Ascension and also some explanations on the story and Alex and, you know, some extra elements of what Ascension may or may not actually be. And then this episode came out and it was like, oh, no, they're still sticking with the Ascension stuff because now we finally have it, you know, by the end where Ruby decides to go through it. So starting way back with episode four, simple episode it wasn't until the end where the girls actually get into the forest and they talk to the caterpillar where it's like okay that's where they kind of go through the element of the opening where it's the girls kind of throughout time and it's like you know everyone's a huntress and then here's ruby and then here's ruby depressed and that, that was pretty much it so everyone's like i'm a huntress this is who i am and ruby's like i was a huntress and i'm depressed now and it's like i feel you so they go through this moment and it's about to reach pretty much what we have currently with the end of the most recent episode and you know the curious cat comes in he gives the caterpillar a little bit of his heart the caterpillar is like oh crap like basically i wasn't supposed to be doing this and then apparently he goes through ascension if someone can explain to me how that works <laughs> for that character in particular i would love the help because i still don't understand how him realizing like oh man i didn't want to do this was him just going through ascension because every other version of ascension that they've explained has to be done in a very specific way like you have to actually die like his version of it was just like oh man i didn't mean to do that like i thought he left like because when they first go into the house or whatever it's in a mushroom or at, at the very least the bottom of a tree it's been a minute since i watched that episode but the thing opens up and that's how they get into the room at the end of the episode and then when he gets a bit of his heart or you know a uh, bit of curious cat's heart he goes into the ground and i just thought he left and then the next episode hits and it's like what happened there is called ascension so we don't really die which they totally do because like they contradicted themselves he was like yeah we don't die we you know we have ascension and as soon as the jabberwock came up it was like oh man we'll actually die so they can die uh if they don't ascend it's because of the jabberwocks which seems to be the only way that that happens based on the fact that um like the origami characters they all flood you know their own town and you know die that way so they must still ascend no matter what unless it's a jabberwock and that's like the only way that you can so once again still weird that the caterpillar just like just went into the ground because he was just like oh man i don't want to do that so i guess you can think it but that doesn't make any sense because if that was the case then the origami characters and that whole village would have just sunk into the ground so i'm still confused as to how he somehow ascended and just went into the ground like nothing happened he got a piece of you know the cat's heart and i'm like that just i don't know i'm confused so if someone has an explanation for that please help me out there because i was just like that contradicts like it doesn't contradict it but in a sense it, it sort of does because it's like well then anyone could just be like all right i'm ready to ascend and then you just drop into the ground but episode four like i said was simple that was the technical introduction to what ascension is episode five gives us kind of the definition of ascension and what actually happens to characters ruby and little end up randomly just walking through space time i guess and they end up coming up against uh the blacksmith and she's kind of just explaining a couple things and we see that she has like a creepy sort of puppet face i thought she was you know blacked out in the intro simply due to the fact that we hadn't seen her yet kind of like how they had the stuff with neo's characters behind her and everything like that and it was like oh okay it's just that she's a creepy character and they're you know keeping her mysterious so i like the way they did that she also had what reminded ruby of crescent rose she also had um penny's blade as well so it's like okay you know, it's a creepy little area and stuff and then poof they're just back in the market again and then they get attacked by a bunch of jabberwocks so that was a cool sequence and of course that's where you know curious cat is like oh crap if they get one of us you know we don't get to ascend we're just gone forever so a bunch of jabberwocks pop up the rest of team ruby ends up getting back to normal size but of course things go crazy and then the jabberwock ends up eating um i think it was a, a drink mixture that they had or it was like you know almost like a parfait and so then it becomes like a giant version and everything ends up working out fine because the rusted knight shows up and it was Jean, and that was super cool. That was a great way to end that episode where it was like, okay, it's obviously Jean, like they aren't even hiding it when he actually gets introduced. Everybody assumed it was him. And then in the episode, even before he takes his helmet off, it's like the shield is like right there. It's like, I didn't even, it didn't even occur to me that maybe someone stole the shield or anything like that. I was just like, oh, they're just like, yeah, it's Jean. Like, here you go, it, it's him. But of course he actually takes his helmet off at the end. So there was no need to <laughs> kind of be curious about it or anything. It's like, 
it's John. That, that's pretty much all there is to it. So four introduces Ascension, five gives us the definition of Ascension, six comes into play, and six was absolutely amazing. And it was just like, okay, here's what happened with John. When he got sent back, he picked up a, a little clock off of a tree and it sent him back in time. And that was super effed up. So he was just stuck there. He ends up becoming the rest of the night within the story. He meets Alex. We find out Alex actually has a brother. We find out that the cat is super mysterious and totally lying to everybody and definitely an a-hole, which was kind of obvious in the beginning anyway. And it was really dark. And I was like, okay. So now there's ascension for the after ends where it's like, hey, this is what we do. And then, you know, we ascend and then we come back as something totally different, which they do reference the fact that even though you become something else, you don't have your memories. However, the heart still remembers. So I think with what happened with Ruby is that with her heart remembering, that's how you're going to be able to basically revert backwards if you do end up changing, at least for humans. It might not be that way for afterins, but also that's kind of their whole thing is like they they change on purpose. So even though she chose to do that, everyone else is around her is going to be like, hey, we want the old version of Ruby back. So they're going to you know try to find ways to tug at her heart to be like, hey, remember who you used to be and then you know come back to us so i think that's their loophole for you know getting ruby back but they definitely reference that and then of course going into um all the madness of episode six where we have you know john explaining the story to us and just how dark things actually were and then also that episode is the revelation that alex is the girl in the intro and it's like okay well it was already kind of like all right it, it seems pretty clear that this random girl you know at the time at least is going to be who ruby eventually turns into and then episode six came out and it was like yeah let me tell you the actual story of what happened and the first thing that pops up is like oh that's the girl from the intro so ruby's going to turn into alex and maybe try to redo the story and make it right again which will definitely not work because they're already past that where things are already horrible and I don't know if people are particularly fond of everything that happened based on all the stuff with like the prince and everything else. I don't think people particularly like humans mostly because of her. So I don't know if that's going to do any good for them whatsoever. If Ruby does end up coming back as Alex, which seems to be like everything they reference in the intro. And then they just threw an extra layer on it when it was like, here's what Alex looks like. And it's like, oh, Ruby coming back as her is not going to be good for them. That's actually going to be a really bad thing. So I'm excited to see that play out. I don't think it could actually get darker <laughs> than the actual most recent episode, but it's going to be dark, I would assume, overall, and just not really go in their favor, her turning into Alex. So I thought that was a really cool way to handle that. And of course, I can't, you know, skip over episode six without mentioning, obviously, Blake and Yang finally kiss after like 10 years. 10 years. Blake and Yang finally kiss. So that was great. Um, they even had to throw it in there where Sean's like, man, I felt like I've been waiting forever for that. So I was like, you know, they had to throw it in there. And I'll tell you, when they did that and they went to the bridge, the first thing I thought was, I swear to God, if they don't kiss, I'm going to be livid. Like this would have been an incredibly angry rant just waiting after all this time and then doing that where it's like, you know, you can only get out if you wait for the storm to pass or if you solve the problem. And if they ended it where it was like, yep, storm passed. Ah, well, let's keep on keeping on. Everybody would have been pissed. So finally it is done you know bumblebee is not just a hopeful song where maybe one day that'll that'll be them now it just is that is that is just their song so that was great i was like all right finally they kiss finally they are officially together it's good things are thing, it was good for like half a second <laughs> and then the next episode came out and it was like oh man you know jean is just super depressed and effed up and he's trying to save these people you know the little origami characters and the girls are just like you know jean's kind of effed up which admittedly he is and so he gets mad about that, which is valid. But at the same time, their thoughts on it are valid because he's kind of effed up. You know, he's sitting at the table is like, you know, it has to work. And he's freaking out like at the table saying, I'm not crazy. And it's like, oh, mm. you know, it, it's been tough. It's been really tough on him. And then, of course, the episode continues. Uh, more Jabberwocks come in. And of course, Neo is just effing with them like crazy. Like when she sent them the first time, that's when it's revealed. They're like, holy crap, Neo is here and she can her powers are different. And then this episode comes along. And Neo was even there at the end. And it was like, oh, she's like, you know, I'm coming for you. Like, I, I hate you, Ruby. I'm coming for you. So I was like, okay, that was an interesting action sequence. Ruby still has PTSD, so she's not even able to fight during that sequence. And I thought that was really well done as well. And then, of course, because they have to, uh, they end up getting distracted because the Jabberwocks come in. Naturally, the origami, origami characters actually make their giant stone tower, which I'm curious how they ended up doing that, considering they're all made of paper. They can barely move like no gust of wind comes in when they're stacking that thing as high as it was. I'm like, how did they even pull that off? But the pebbles hit the well, I can't say pebbles, but the stones fall and they hit the wall, um, basically destroying the dam. All the water comes in 
kills all of them off as Jean is just left again and we kind of realize that he's not the hero like he's still dealing with the fact that he can't be the hero that he wanted to be like when he told the story he was like i couldn't even be the you know the make-believe hero like his whole story arc has been that he wants to be a hero like even from the very beginning of the series was he had to lie to get into school but his whole family is like known for being huntsmen and huntresses and it's like he doesn't want to fail and all he does is fail and fail and fail and lose people and eventually he's at the point where he's had to kill somebody that he cared about and then right after that he was left alone for like i don't know how many years i mean it seems like the way that they did the age on his character they're all teenagers so they're in like area of like 15 or so i think at this point I, you know it's hard to remember as far as like the timeline of the show versus obviously real life like i said it's been like 10 years since the show premiered but they haven't aged 10 years in the show but i i would assume he has like he also has like white in his hair and stuff so i'm like he would have to be like seemingly like mid 30s or, or something like the way they did it was just like he has to be like fairly old but yeah you know, at the same time it was just like I, it was hard to tell exactly kind of how they're doing it although uh it did confirm that weiss is obviously uh into older guys she's just like oh you got so rugged and it's like you know not that i'm like super horny or anything but you know just saying um so i thought that was a funny sequence but it was like yeah that was just funny to throw that one in there but i love what they did with that episode and then it was like okay they have like their huge blowout ruby is super pissed she finally snaps and they had an amazing moment where she's mad at everyone and it was funny to see it where it was like from her perspective it makes sense that she finally snapped like all the loss and stuff that she's gone through and her you know being in the leadership role that's what made her kind of you know have finally have that moment where she just snaps on everybody and then it comes to jean and it's like oh no you don't get to do that to me like he's you know he's also you know in the leadership position and you know he's fellow pira he you know like obviously for ruby like penny is the one person where she's lost her two separate times for jean it's like he lost pira obviously he wasn't as close to penny but the second time he literally had to kill her himself and then he's just been trapped after that failure where it's like i had to kill somebody that i cared about and then i'm left alone for like 10 years so and then of course he ends up being you know the rest at night and all of that goes horrifically wrong compared to what he expected from the story so like he's just suffering and his whole thing was like all i have to do wake up every day do this this and this at these specific times and then in between that i go out and kind of explore all the different areas which is very interesting because this map was like ridiculously huge and i was like oh this place is a lot bigger than it seemed from the first episode where it was like okay there's like five spots and then the trees in the middle is like no there's like a buttload of location so i was surprised by that when he like pulled the map out and i was like oh that's a lot of little hexagons so don't know how much more we should really expect to see but he mapped out like quite a few places more than what i even expected you know like i said from the first episode but it was really well done you know he yells at her and it's like you know it's all about you like all the choices you make that got people screwed over and everything like that so <clears throat> they're both in that specific position but i feel like simply because of what he's gone through with the length of time like he's gone through having to you know be a leader in you know different positions as well um i was kind of more on his side where i was like dang it they both have gone through like a ridiculous amount of stuff so a ton of the other characters and um weiss even says it I, I think she said it you know in the more recent episode where it's like you know we always kind of say like you know hey you're a good leader and you know we believe in you and we trust you and stuff which you know hey you know jean called it on that one thing. i forgot what season that was but i think everyone watching the show was like it's really stupid that everyone's following her and being like yeah we shouldn't tell people that this thing is happening i was like that i think everybody was collectively like that's stupid and that didn't work and then the other things happened later that also didn't work and it was like yeah those are kind of your plans and jean does have a point and also being in a leadership position as well he's lost things he's had to do really dark stuff that even ruby hasn't done like despite her plans failing and getting people killed her failed plan that got someone killed forced someone else to kill a friend and you know like i said he had to kill somebody and then it's like cool i killed somebody and i'm alone forever you know that's how it felt at least so i thought that was interesting it was just like a wild way to end the episode and then of course we go into our most recent episode let's get that out of there you know that's just more accurate to the episode now the rest of the series i guess so we'll see what happens you know, that's ruby volume nine right there so this most recent episode was why it, once it starts with the warning i was like okay this this should be fun this should be a wild episode and man it was insane uh first off neo's amazing like i want her to be the final villain of the series at this point because i was like okay this was the one where 
it was less so her actual fighting skills and it was more so just her abilities because her whole thing has been like yeah she has her powers and they utilized that definitely um like in the last couple episodes of the last volume where she was pretending to be oscar and was like trying to get the lamp and everything but before that her whole thing was that she was just an insanely epic fighter like her first introduction her fighting with yang the whole thing was like she doesn't really have to defend much she just kind of like moves around everyone else as they move towards her so that was always her thing and she was always super cool because of that and then the advancement of her powers was so interesting where it was like where in the world are they going to take this and then this episode was just dark like she was just like look i hate ruby and i'm going to show that i hate ruby and that was amazing it led to an amazing dark episode but an amazing episode nonetheless and so we get roman torch back which was super cool um obviously played by two different voice actors um i thought that was interesting which i you know i did a little research of course afterwards the first guy that does like the first couple of lines that goes through it unfortunately he passed away uh, that's who uh, the episode is uh, in memoriam to it's it's the first voice actor um and he replaced the last guy who was the original voice actor who was one of the people that left after all the absolute madness that happened at rooster teeth so he was one of the people that is gone um so it was cool to see him come back it's the first time we've seen him in you know the new graphics and stuff like that he also voiced him i believe it was in whatever that last game was i think it was like the either the 2d game or there was some other thing that came out um and he ended up voicing uh, roman torchwick in that so if you like him doing the voice you know the first guy I, I felt like they sounded the same which is crazy like the guy who ended up replacing the man that passed away sounded just like him too i was like it obviously i could tell it wasn't the original guy and then i couldn't tell that the voice switched in the middle of the episode and i was like oh that's crazy um so i thought that was really interesting because like i couldn't even tell I, I knew it was a different voice i couldn't tell it was two different voices so i thought that was uh pretty interesting but it was great to see him again we saw pira again you know we see both of them for the first time in the new uh, animation style which i thought was super cool um it's, you know not in the happiest of circumstances but definitely cool to see him also really hilarious that they put lionheart in there i know he technically died but everyone watching had to just be like they might as well have saved a couple of bucks on animating that dude because who cares who cares that he's dead like lionheart like nobody wants him so it was surprising to see him there but it was cool that they you know they had all the characters that had passed away throughout their series and i just love the way that that scene played out like just neo just constantly torturing ruby and it was like it was like the super dark thing where it was like i don't want to just kill you like i could just beat you to death like i mean honestly the part with Ozpin where he was just welling on her was like it just like you could see her getting bruised that was like where they really started to do it because she was getting beat up and stuff but that was where it was like she's just being hit on the ground with a stick and just getting bruised up and then of course she grabs her scythe tries to cut him and then of course he, he drops the staff and then it ends up becoming oscar it was like wow first off it was great to hear all the voices as well that was just a random thing because of how separate this volume has been so far and you know obviously it's been super long since we had the last volume anyway so it was like as dark as this episode is a part of me was just like man it's really cool to at least see the other characters and hear the actual voice actors like speak even though it's in a super dark setting i was just like oh, it feels good to be like oh there's ozpin and there's oscar and you know like here's Pira coming back which I also just found out today that um Ruby Chibi has been back as well I had no idea that that was a thing so Ruby Chibi volume four is out or season four however they do it for Ruby Chibi um so I'm, I'm excited to look into that but I had no idea that that was back so looking forward to checking that out that'll be much happier after this episode so that, that'll be great but love seeing the characters uh coming back once again despite it being super dark and just the way they handled it was so well done where Neo's just like hey Here's a leaf from the tree we'll just drop it in this cup for you all you gotta do is take a sip and just go go away like don't die literally disappear like become something totally different on a molecular level change be something else and neil was super dark for doing that but it was it was really really well done and it's just like eventually she's just beating her up and beating her up and then oh man it was so crazy little comes in at the end you know like it, and it was great it was just like ruby was right in the beginning of this episode it was like if you don't leave you know you'll get hurt too 100 percent correct just squished and i was like dang she did like the the toe twist as well it's just like dang that's effed up so it's just super dark just she killed she killed little who will of course come back in some way shape or form i don't know if they'll do it because they hadn't really touched on it but i highly doubt it'll happen this way but it was like a random thing i thought of when little is introduced the reason she like goes on that journey is because she was like oh yeah i don't have a purpose yet I don't think that just because you die without a purpose means you come you can come back as the same person I would assume that that's not the case but also we don't know what happens when people actually ascend because something that happened uh there are a couple of things that happened as far as dialogue was concerned during this episode 
but when Jean was talking to Curious Cat and was like, take, you know, take us to her, and he's like, you still don't get it after all this time. It's not a place that you go, it's a place that you know. So it seems like a mental sort of purgatory type of situation. And then you get to choose what you come back as, or at least somewhat, like it might be subconscious where you do whatever, somehow you make this decision. And it's sort of an in-between space where you don't really get to just go there and then come back. It's like just, you know, an ethereal sort of realm type of situation. So I'm excited to see how that plays out, but I don't know if they'll actually show it with Little. I've seen a bunch of stuff on Twitter where everybody's like, you know, what is the Curious Cat going to do when Little comes back as big or something silly like that? Um, but it'll be interesting to see. I, I don't think that Little will come back the same just because she didn't have her purpose yet. But that would be interesting if they made that kind of twist on it where it's like, this is what happens if you die before even finding your purpose. You can technically come back because you know what your purpose is now. And so you get it's like a weird loophole. I don't think they'll do it, but that would be a cool twist. And I, I feel like it would make sense because it's like it's just, you know, it's it's a classic writing thing where it's like we didn't technically say that there's no other way to do it. It's just maybe super uncommon. Things are different when it comes to humans, potentially, because the curious cat can say whatever he wants. And it's like that won't happen to you guys. And like you don't actually know what's going to happen at all. So looking forward to the next episode for sure. But this was definitely a great dark episode and it'll be interesting to see in general just like where in the world we go from here because ruby is going to once again based on the opening and everything we've seen for whatever reason ruby is going to turn into alex and i don't know if that's going to play out too well so i'm very curious how that's going to end up turning out um as far as you know all the characters are concerned and then of course we have the curious cat where neo finally she has like the classic thing i've done my ultimate goal what comes next i don't know she was just stuck there it was like she had nothing but revenge and that was it because she was she had nothing before that like her whole thing was falling roman which we see kind of the cycle of her life she grew up with her family roman kind of came in helped kill her family off and then he ends up being killed off and then it's like all right well i guess i'll move on to cinder and she's a real bitch so i was like well that sucks and now i have nothing but revenge so maybe once they separate the curious cat from her she'll come back she doesn't have to turn into a good guy or anything but if she came back and was like okay i kind of have my revenge on you let me you know go backwards a little bit like two three volumes ago and be like you know what what if i go back to cinder perfectly fine she doesn't have to side with the heroes but she could go back to hating cinder and i'd be perfectly fine with that because i just don't like cinder either i think i like the cat less because he's just a real a-hole but so is cinder i don't know they're like i don't know it might be, cinder might be on top like just i just don't like her character I, I just don't like her it's not that her character's written bad i just hate her so so much but curious cat what a douchebag and so he takes over neo who the f knows what that's gonna do super crazy uh facial structure and like him just being giant and all this stuff also some saw somebody mention on twitter um when he like changes color his color scheme is that of grim and i was like that's interesting because that leads to one of the other random dialogue things when he was trying to take over ruby and he was like you know i'm cursed with knowledge but the thing that i want to know more than anything else is why my creators left me here and then they went on to make all of and it seemed like he was going to say all of you or something like that but then he gets cut off because little bites him on the tail and i was like huh maybe he knows that this world came first and then remnant came after and i thought that was very interesting and that was another theory that i saw after i even saw the episode that kind of you know helped my random theory was like huh that's an interesting bit of dialogue where it was like he kind of knows that his creators made all of them and then they left to do something else and i saw somebody mention that what if salem basically made this world and then when they went to like the next one it was more like kind of what we got as far as the world of remnant and it ends up being more of Ozpin's story versus Salem's story. And I was like, that's interesting. That, that's very interesting. Even though they're both very integral, you know, to Remnant, it wouldn't be that surprising if it was just like, you know, something random happened and the gods kind of made that world first. And, you know, it might not necessarily be Salem or anything. It could just be, you know, the gods that did all the crazy. It's been a minute since we saw that episode. So I can't remember all the specifics of how that happened and how the timeline went of people dying and them destroying the world and then her being cursed to live forever so i can't remember exactly how all of that played out but it would be interesting if that all ends up being tied in where it was like they made that world first and then they kind of were like ah, all right let's just kind of flip it over and then we'll just start over on this side so i thought that was interesting where it's like that's what i want to know above all else i'm cursed with knowledge but that's what i want to know more than anything why did my creators make me and then leave me here to make seemingly what he was about to say is make all of you guys so i love that little bit of dialogue getting cut off because we're definitely getting that answer at some point but i love the creepy version of the curious cat him inside of neo the crazy teeth and all that stuff 
absolutely love the design of everything they did with that and i can't wait to see what they do next i mean yang is super effed up she's basically just frozen still it makes sense she keeps losing people too like outside of the whole leadership thing everybody just keeps dying around her so I, we just have to wait and see what happens next week but i absolutely love this last episode i loved all of them um once it got into like all the ascension stuff i think everything like really picked up for the show so it's definitely where i was hoping it would be as far as like the intensity of the series and just how the characters are interacting with each other jean coming in and him being a much darker older version of himself and just being stuck where he's at and still suffering from wanting to be the leader that he can't be and then dealing with the losses that he's had and the things he's had to do and you know failing with the story like i said not even being able to be the make-believe hero everything they've done with him i think is fantastic everything they're about to do i'm sure is going to be really crazy so I'm, I'm definitely looking forward to seeing what happens when ruby turns into alex and what in the world that means for everyone else of course i still want to know what happened with alex's brother because we still don't have that answer so there's a lot of stuff up in the air right now but i'm looking forward to what we get next we'll love to know what you guys thought about all of these episodes but of course ruby gone ruby's ascension her turning into alex uh, if they pull a twist on us and she becomes someone totally different i'd be very shocked by that but it seems like we should expect her to turn into alex again uh based on everything they've done in the opening but we'll love to know your thoughts on all these episodes all the stuff with ascension where in the world are we headed the truth behind what ascension does to humans and what happened with alex's brother you know is their job to just feed the tree there, you know so many things up in the air so i would love to know all your theories and what you guys thought about these last couple episodes and especially this most recent one so please put your comments down in the comment section below and of course thanks for watching